I'd like you to think, take five. Before I'm putting on a mask, I'm gonna take five quality respirations. Once I have the mask on, I'm gonna take five more. And then when I remove the mask, I'm gonna take the most important five respirations. And I'll tell you why. Masks have become part of our everyday lives. The CDC recommends we wear masks whenever social distancing becomes difficult. We wear the mask to protect others because we might be asymptomatic. We might not feel sick, but we still have the potential to carry the virus and give it to others. So wearing the mask absolutely is critical in slowing the spread. However, wearing a mask can cause changes in the way you breathe, which can affect how you think and how you feel. For some of us, when we wear the mask, the feeling of claustrophobia causes you to take panicked breaths. For others, just the extra pressure of having to breathe through a mask causes you to take a shorter breath than normal. This type of breathing is known as hyperventilation. And it has a number of problems. One, you can see I'm breathing with my neck and my chest. This means I'm not breathing with my diaphragm the appropriate muscle for respiration. See, our diaphragm is supposed to pull downward, causing a change in pressure that pulls air in our lungs. This is important because our diaphragm is connected to our parasympathetic nervous system, the part of our body responsible for being calm, relaxed, and thoughtful. If we're taking these faster than normal breaths, we're short-circuiting that system, making it more difficult to calm down, something we could all use right now. But further, if I breathe too quickly, the carbon dioxide levels in my body start to become lower than normal. I'm breathing carbon dioxide faster than I'm producing it. And this causes a number of issues. You see, carbon dioxide is what inflates our blood vessels. So if I breathe too quickly, the blood vessels in my brain get smaller and I'm gonna have a more difficult time getting blood to where I need it most. Further, it influences something known as oxygen hemoglobin disassociation. Think of your red blood cell as a bus. It stops in your lungs and picks up the oxygen passengers. But as it circles throughout your body, it needs a certain pressure of carbon dioxide. It needs carbon dioxide passengers to get on the bus in order to push those oxygen passengers off. If I'm breathing too quickly and my carbon dioxide levels are too low, as my bus is making it stop in the brain, not enough oxygen passengers get off and I'm slowly suffocating my brain. This will cause things like feelings of anxiety, confusion, potentially even fatigue. On the opposite side, certain masks will cause an inhibition of breathing. Masks like the N95 or cloth masks when they get damp will influence your ability to pull air in and out. This means you're not getting enough oxygen in and you're not releasing enough carbon dioxide. This will cause your CO2 levels to become too high. High carbon dioxide levels are associated with headaches and higher blood pressure and irritability and also fatigue. And this is important for our healthcare workers who are wearing masks for eight, 12 hours a day. So how do we account for this? Well. Thankfully, the answer is fairly simple. By taking deliberate practice of how we respirate, how we breathe in and out, we can accommodate wearing the mask and still feel comfortable and healthy. Before I put the mask on, I wanna calm myself down and be relaxed and comfortable. So having the mask won't affect me. Once the mask's on, I wanna take five proper respirations because I wanna set a good pattern. I wanna introduce my body to what I want it to do over the course of the time wearing the mask. And most importantly, when I remove the mask, I wanna reset my autonomic nervous system. I wanna make sure that my body remembers the right way to breathe. Because the most problematic issue is if I've worn the mask for 20 minutes while I'm grocery shopping, but when I take it off, I continue that hyperventilation pattern. This can lead to problems like disruptions in my sleep and eventually health problems down the line. So how do I take a quality respiration? Well, first, I'm gonna breathe in through my nose for four seconds. We breathe through the nose because it introduces another chemical called nitric oxide that changes, makes more efficient the blood and gas exchange in my lungs. It's also 
more difficult, so it's slower to pull air in through my nose. And that's what's important. We want to slow down our, our breathing cycle. I want to take a six second exhale, slow, calm, and relaxed. This is important because I'm using my diaphragm to push air out. So I'm activating that calming parasympathetic nervous system. But I'm also allowing more time for my heart to beat slowly. See, when I'm breathing out, I'm releasing pressure in my chest. I'm making it easier for my heart to beat. The longer I can have my out breath, the more time my heart has to take a relaxed, slower beat. Finally, I want to take a two second pause. That two second pause maximizes that change in heart rate, that heart rate variability, and also allows maximal time for gas exchange inside the lungs. So it looks like this. I'm gonna take five quality respirations just before I put the mask on. Calm me down, prepare me for what I'm about to do. Now when I wear the mask, immediately I'm gonna take five to make sure I set a good pattern. After my five quality respirations, I carry out whatever business or necessary activity I'm working on. And when I remove the mask, this is the critical one. I wanna take the five most deliberate, perfect breaths I can to reset my nervous system back to how I properly should be breathing. Remember, take five anytime you're gonna be wearing the mask. But there's more. While I'm wearing my mask, I wanna look around at others. Notice other people hyperventilating. <laughs> Notice the difficult they're having breathing, the change in their posture, the change in the look in their eye. And then now that you know better, see if you can take longer, slower breaths. Watching other people breathe is a great way to remind ourselves of what the right thing should look like. Also, if you're going to be wearing the mask for more than 20 minutes, be sure to take breathing breaks whenever it's safe. Whenever you can be far enough from others that you can remove your mask and take some of those quality respirations, it absolutely will change the way your body feels and your mind works. Finally, if you'd really like to go the extra mile, Consider respiratory muscle training. Your respiratory muscles are just like any other muscle in your body. If I want bigger biceps, I have to do curls. If I want strong respirations, I have to overload my breathing muscles and force them to work. PN Medical makes a device, the breather and the breather fit. It's an inspiratory and expiratory resistance trainer so I can work my respiratory muscles and make them stronger. This will allow me to pull more air in through a mask, to more gently release air while wearing a mask, and to feel more healthy, calm, and efficient, whether I'm wearing a mask or not. Breathing is one of the most important things our body does. It absolutely changes the way we think and the way we feel. But so few of us ever actually target our respiratory system. We can spend time in a gym, to build our bodies, we read books to build our minds. It's important that right now in this environment, we spend a little bit of time training our respiratory drive. The breather fit is simple to use. Taking those same quality breaths, but with resistance, makes my diaphragm and my breathing muscles stronger so they're more capable when I need them. For more information, check out the website. And please, 
Wear the mask to protect others. Train your breathing to protect yourself.